In August 1985, the then Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, phoned me and said, I have a new boss for you. What do you think about Lincoln Alexander? And I said, I think he will be superb. Then on September the 20th, 20th of that year, Link was sworn in as the 24th Lieutenant Governor of the province of Ontario. Three days later, I participated in Link's first official event in Ontario. It was the plowing match in Stirling, Ontario. <laughs> now, some of you don't know about Stirling, Ontario. Let me just say, it's loyalist country. I'm not being pejorative, but you would not use the adjectives urbane or multicultural to apply <laughs> to Stirling, Ontario. And it was a rainy day, and there was a crowd of farmers, soggy farmers, standing in their rubber boots, and there was a hay, hay wagon that had been turned into a makeshift stage. The lieutenant governor, the new lieutenant governor was introduced. I suspect most people did not know what a lieutenant governor was, and the, the other part of the group had never seen a black person before. <laughs> Link walked onto the stage, as Collins said, his shoes were shined, wearing a $2,000 suit, and he was devilishly handsome. And I'll remember to this day, there was a long pause, and then he said, man, you're my kind of people. <laughs> and that, my friends, was the official beginning of the permanent love affair with Lincoln Alexander and 13 million people in the province of Ontario. <laughs> Link, how many people in the world are known by everybody as one name? Madonna, Prince, Cher, and Link. <laughs> and how many people's name describe exactly what they do. That's what Link did. He linked people to people, community to community, and culture to culture in a way that was unique to him. Colin talked about Link's life, and it was a life of firsts. It wasn't always easy. And some of the strengths was obviously born out of his own particular situation but there was something of magic about that heart that was totally unique to Link. He possessed a humanity, an overarching humanity that was absolutely unique. And he transmitted his love and affection like no one I have ever seen. He loved his family. He loved Yvonne and Keith and Joyce, Erica, and these wonderful kids, and Marissa, and he always was talking and bragging about them. But he loved people. He loved women. <laughs> he loved men. He loved kids. He loved old people. He loved the rich and the poor. And they all loved him back. People from all walks of life. And Link embodied more than any other person I have met in my life those immortal words of Kipling that said, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. I was privileged to spend a great deal of time with Link. He was my boss. And during public life, I would walk down the hall, and I'll confess it now, we'd have a smoke. We, we were not drinking, we had the odd smoke. And we would talk about public life. And we would talk about what we were doing. I even went to him in 1990 and said, Link, do you think I should have an election? And uh, he said, have you thought that one through, Premier? But that's another story. <laughs> Shelley and I, you know, some people assume that all public events are fun and scintillating. 
there's a number of politicians in this room today, and they will agree with me, not all of them are. But every event with him, with Shelley and I and Yvonne, was absolutely fun and scintillating. He could find the fun, he could find the humor, he could find the humanity in any situation. And it was constantly a joy to be with him. And after public life, I'm proud to say we continued in our association. Shelley and I would come to Hamilton, we'd go to Theatre Aquarius, a wonderful theater in this community, we'd have dinner, attend each other's kids' weddings, shared birthdays, and we were very, very proud to be at his wedding to Marnie. And Marnie is a wonderful woman who made Link very, very happy in his final years, and he told me many times how lucky he was to have her. Link would have loved this ceremony today. More than any of you, let me tell you. <laughs> he loves the music. He loves the people in uniform. He loves the fun and the speeches. You know, he loved uniforms. He once told me that he joined the Air Force rather than the Army or the Navy because they had snappier uniforms. <laughs> But that was not what, just what Link was about. And if he thought we just took a little, just a little of the overarching humanity that he possessed and made it our own in our own lives, he would be very, very pleased today. And I know what he would say if he was here today. He would say to each and every one in this room, man, you're my kind of people.